Hello there. Welcome to week eight of Math Wonders. Today we will be talking about time, shapes, and fractions. Now let's begin with time. Now what we have here right now is called an analog clock. So on an analog clock, it has several parts. We have the long hand and the short hand. Now let's look at the long hand here on the board. Okay, this is the shorthand. The shorthand tells you the hour on the clock. Okay, so on this analog clock, we have 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So when the shorthand points at each of at one of each of this number, it will tell you the hour. On the other hand, we have the long hand or the longer hand on this clock. And this long hand tells you the minute. Now remember, in one hour, there are 60 minutes. Again, what are the parts of this clock? We have the short hand and the long hand. The short hand tells you the hour and the longer hand tells you the minute. When the long hand is exactly on number 12, like this one in the example here, it is one full hour and we say o'clock. This is how we read this time. So first you read the short hand. So the short hand on this clock points at eight so you say eight and the long hand is pointing at 12. We say the time here is eight o'clock. It is eight o'clock. Remember when the minute hand is pointing to 12, it is showing a full hour. We call this time o'clock. On this clock, the hour hand is pointing at eight and the minute hand is pointing to 12. This clock is showing that the time is eight o'clock. Now let's look at other clocks here. Now, look at this. The short hand is pointing at number four and the long hand is pointing on 12. So we say it is four o'clock. On this clock, the short hand is pointing on number two and the long hand is pointing directly on number 12. So the time here is, it is two o'clock. How about this clock? The short hand is pointing at seven and the long hand is pointing at 12. So it is seven o'clock. The short hand is pointing at three and the long hand is pointing at 12. So what time is it? It is three o'clock. The short hand is pointing at 11 and the long hand is pointing at 12. What time is it? It is 11 o'clock. The short hand is pointing at six and the long hand is pointing at 12. What time is it? It is six o'clock. The short hand is pointing at nine and the long hand is pointing at 12. What time is it? It is nine o'clock. The short hand is pointing at 12 and the long hand is pointing at 12. What time is it? It is 12 o'clock. Now, we all know that one hour has 60 minutes. And there are 30 minutes in half an hour. Why is that so? Like I said, there are 60 minutes in one hour. Divide that into two or half that. 30 and 30 will give you 60. So there are 30 minutes in half an hour. Now, when the long hand is directly on number six, it is 30 minutes past the hour. We say it is half past the hour, or we say it's 30. In this case, 
Look at the shorthand first. That's the first thing that you read every time you look at the analog clock. The shorthand is between one and two. So you always read the number before. So that is a one. So we say one and then it's a number six and we say 30. So we say 130 or it is half past one. What time is it? The shorthand is between three and four. Again, we say the number before. So we say 330 or half past three. Now let's look at these in practice. The first clock, the shorthand is between one and two. So that will be one and the long hand is on six. That means 30 or half past the hour. So we say 130. The next clock, the shorthand is between three and four. So we always read the number before, which is the three. Three, and it's directly, the long hand is directly on number six. Three, 30 or half past three. The third clock, look at the shorthand. The shorthand is between nine and 10. So we always take the number before. So that's a nine, nine, and the long hand is directly on number six. So that's 30. We say it is 930 or half past nine. Very good. So that's how you read an analog clock. Remember, you start off with a shorthand first and then the long hand. When the long hand is directly on number 12, we say o'clock. But if it's on number six, that means it's half past the hour or 30. Good. Now let's go on now and look at our 2D shapes. Let me just erase this one. Now, what are 2D shapes? An example of a 2D shapes are regular polygons. A polygon is a plain 2D shape with straight sides. To be a regular polygon, all the sides and angles must be the same. Now, another way to look at 2D shapes is to remember that 2D shapes are flat. Okay, let's look at the 2D shapes. An example of a 2D shape is a circle. A circle have one side and no corners. Now you might be wondering, where is the side of the circle? The side of the circle is the curved side. Another 2D shape is a square. A square is a regular shape. It has four straight sides and four corners. All the sides are the same length. This is a triangle. A triangle has three sides and three corners. All the sides on this triangle that we have on the board is a regular triangle and have the same size. But remember, not all triangles have the same size. Some triangles has different size, but in this example, this triangle has the same size, same length of the size. This is a pentagon. A pentagon has five straight sides and five corners. All the sides are the same length in this regular pentagon. This is a rectangle. A rectangle has four sides and four corners. They have two long sides and two short sides. This is a hexagon. A hexagon has six sides and six corners. This is an octagon. An octagon has eight sides and eight corners. This is an oval. Like the circle, an oval also has one side, but it does not have any corners. This is a rhombus. A rhombus has four straight sides and four corners. All the sides are the same length. This is a trapezoid. A trapezoid has four straight sides and four corners. It has two long sides and two short sides. This shape is called a kite. 
A kite has four straight sides and four corners. It has two long sides and two short sides. This is a heptagon. A heptagon has seven sides and seven corners. All of the sides are the same in a regular heptagon. This is a nonagon. A nonagon has nine sides and nine corners. This is a decagon. A decagon has 10 sides and 10 corners. And we also have what we call the parallelogram. A parallelogram has four sides and two pairs of parallel lines. The sides are not necessarily of equal length or have congruent angles. So these are examples of 2D shapes. Now, what is a fraction? A fraction is a part of a whole, like a piece of a whole pizza or a whole pie. Now let's look at this. Let's say we have the 2D shape circle here on the side. And we try to divide that, that pie or circle into four parts. Let's divide them into four. And then I will shade a part of that circle. I shaded one part of that circle. So that number one, I write it on top, okay? Now, the number at the bottom, I need to count how many total pieces I have all in all. One, two, three, four. I have four parts all in all. So a fraction for this circle here, which I shaded yellow, is one fourth. Again, why is it one fourth? Because there is only one yellow part that I shaded. I put that on top of the fraction. And then the number four goes at the bottom because there are four equal parts. Now, a fraction is also a part of a set like in a dozen cupcakes. So when we say dozen, that means 12. Let's say we ate three pieces of that cupcake. I put the number three on top. And how many cupcakes do I have all in all? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I have 12 cupcakes all in all. So the fraction of those three cupcakes out of a dozen cupcakes is three twelfths. Again, what is a fraction? A fraction is part of a whole and also a part of a set. Now there are two parts in a fraction. We have the number on top, which is what we call the numerator, and the number at the bottom, which is called the denominator. So what is the numerator? The numerator tells us how many pieces you have from the whole. In this example, there's only one yellow part here. So I put that number one on top of the fraction. Now, what is the number at the bottom? The number at the bottom tells you how many total pieces there are in the whole. This circle is cut into four pieces. So that number goes at the bottom of the fraction. So a fraction for this circle here with one yellow part shaded is one fourth. Again, what are the two parts of a fraction? We have the numerator, the number on top, and the denominator, the number at the bottom. Now, quarter fractions. What are quarter fractions? When an object is evenly divided into four, it becomes a quarter. For example, look at this square here. There are four parts in this square, the red, the blue, the yellow, and the green. It's evenly divided into four. That is why we call it a quarter. Now, let's try some examples here. Let's name these fraction. What fraction of the square is blue? How many blue parts do you see in this square? There is only one blue part of this square. And what number do we put at the bottom? There are four parts in this square. One, two, 
three, four. So we write that number four at the bottom. So the fraction of the square, the blue part of the square, which is blue, is one fourth. Now let's try another fraction. What fraction of the rectangle is red? Now, first you count how many red parts you see in this rectangle. In this case, there are two. So I put that number two at the top, which is the numerator, and then count how many parts is this rectangle divided into. There are one, two, three, four. So you put that number four at the bottom. So the fraction of the rectangle, which is red, is two fourths. What fraction of this circle is red? Let's count how many red parts do you see in the circle? That's correct. There are three red parts in this circle. What number goes at the bottom? This circle is divided into four. So I put that number four at the bottom. So the fraction of this circle, which is red, is three fourths. What fraction of this circle is blue? Now let's count how many blue parts we have. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I put that number six on top of the fraction. Now, what number do I put at the bottom? Let's count how many parts all we have all in all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that number eight goes at the bottom of the fraction. So the fraction for the blue part of this circle is six eighths. Now remember, there are two parts in a fraction, the number on top and the number at the bottom. The number on top is called a numerator. It tells you how many pieces you have from the whole. And the number at the bottom is called the denominator. It tells you how many total pieces are there in the whole. Okay, a numerator on top, denominator at the bottom. Very good. Now, I'm going to send you some worksheets for practice at home. If you have any questions, please feel free to message me via OutSchool. I hope you have a great weekend and I hope you have a great week ahead of you. Thank you so much for the session and hopefully I will see you in other classes. Goodbye.